In Parliament today, Health Minister Gan Kim Yong said the government will consider three factors before lifting the circuit breaker measures. First, the number of cases have to remain low. Second, it will assess the global situation. A third, there should be a system to allow the country to open up safely. Community cases should ideally fall to zero or single digit daily with very low numbers of unlinked cases and not just for one day but sustained over a period of time. We also need to see a decrease in migrant worker cases. We would review the rate of transmissions in other countries as well as what they have done to contain, to, to contain the spread. For any reopening of our borders, we are likely to start small and selectively and to continue to impose a mix of isolation and test requirements to protect ourselves from new imported cases leading to community spread. Well, companies will have to change their work culture and practices even after circuit breaker measures have been lifted. Minister for National Development Lawrence Wong said this applies to all sectors of the economy. And that's why MTI and MAM are engaging industry associations, business chambers and firms to help them adapt to these new realities. For example, telecommuting will have to be a default option extended to all staff. And then for those who cannot telecommute, strict safe management practices will have to be implemented. And all of these safeguards must be in place before we can allow workplaces to reopen and allow more people to resume going to work. Some sectors such as entertainment and FMB outlets will have to wait. Religious gatherings may also take some time to resume. Meanwhile, plans are underway to increase testing capacity from the current 8,000 to 40,000 test tests a day. Healthcare facilities will also be ramped up. The number of isolation beds tripled from around 550 in January to 1,500 in May. Another 450 intensive care unit beds can be added to public hospitals by the middle of this month if necessary. By the end of May, more than 100,000 self-employed people would have benefited from the Self-Employed Person Income Relief Scheme. Manpower Minister Josephine Teo said close to $1 billion in cash is expected to be paid out. Whether for SEPs or regular employees, finding a job at such times will not be easy. This is why we launched the SG United Jobs Initiative in March. By now, more than 16,000 immediate job vacancies have been made available. This is already higher than our initial target of 10,000 jobs. And over $7 billion was paid out to employers in April through the Job Support Scheme, with another $4 billion to be paid out this month. And giving an update on the COVID-19 outbreak in foreign worker dormitories, Mrs. Teo said that the focus now is getting the recovery right to minimise the risk of, in, of recurrent transmissions. Mr. Wong also responded to calls from nominated MPs to launch an inquiry into the situation. Likewise, at the right time, we will comprehensively review this pandem pandemic and our responses. Not just the outbreak in the dormitories, but the entire crisis from start to finish and our overall response, and we will seek to learn and improve. And I have no doubt that we will find many things where we could have done better and many changes we should make to be better prepared the next time. Well, that's plenty to digest in uh, this parliament sitting. So let's break it all down with the Straits Times deputy political editor, Royston Sim. So Royston, you know, some circuit breaker measures will be eased from tomorrow. What do the ministers have to say about that, especially when it comes to the public's attitudes regarding the relaxing of these restrictions? Hi, Olivia. Um, basically, the message is, uh, you know, that the easing of the measures uh, cannot be taken to a signal that you know people should take it easy and start going out. Uh, the message is really that the fight is far from over. That uh, Lawrence Wong said that you know this entire battle against COVID nineteen is really a marathon. Uh, it's not a sprint, and we are not even at the halfway mark. So you know they, I think they really want to take pains to stress that people should not, um, you know, take it to mean that they can start going out. That the situation is getting better. Uh, 
because his I think their point is that even if the number of cases have come down, all it takes is one single case to spark off a new cluster and the transmission could start again. So um, people have to be very careful and, and we are far from being out of the woods. And uh, I think the other thing that Gan said was uh, even though uh, the, the health minister, Gan Kim Yong said, was that even even after the measures uh, are progressively lifted, uh, you know, from uh, June 1st, assuming that happens, uh, this will be, have to be done in a very phased and very calibrated manner uh, so that you take it step by step and, and you make sure that at each point, uh, you know, the trend, number of uh, cases or there, there are no new cases of infection. Mm. And uh, what updates uh, did the ministers, uh, specifically Ministers Gan and Wong, uh, give about the st status of Singapore's battle against COVID-19? So, uh, Minister Gan uh, basically said that the circuit breaker measures appear to be working. He said the number of community uh, new community cases have come down uh, in the past week. I think it was... Uh, more than about 31 in the past week to about 11. Uh, and likewise, the number of uh, unlinked community cases have come down. So he, he is saying that you know, the circuit breaker measures so far appear to be uh, having an effect. Uh, and uh, for Minister Lawrence Wong, he, he basically set out a sort of a, a roadmap, if you will, for how we should reopen. And, and basically, like what I mentioned earlier, how it has to be done in a very sort of phased and uh, calibrated manner. How, you know, when uh, people go back to work, telecommuting will still have to be a default option. And for those that are, uh, for companies or workers that are unable to do this, you know, there will be, have to be safe management practices in place. Uh, for example, workers uh, won't be able to gather, uh, you know, in, in, at pantries, you know, they should, adopt safe distancing measures at all times. And uh, Mr. Wong also talked about how there'll be a nationwide testing strategy that will be adopted and also how the government will tap on technology to sort of help it with contact tracing. So that's the Trace Together app and also how the, the safe entry application you know, will be made mandatory for all workplaces from mm. May. Uh, and I also want to, to mention uh, Manpower Minister Jocelyn Teo. What she said in a ministerial statement was that the situation in the 43 purpose built uh, dormitories, which together house about 200,000 workers, uh, is, has largely stabilized. And she is saying that uh, you know, it's the situation in your factory converted dormitories, uh, which uh, I think together have about house of 95,000 uh, foreign workers. These are smaller dormitories. How, you know the situation there and in your construction temple quarters um, the scenario the, the situation there is more mixed and, and you know it's it's sort of harder to get under control right well very comprehensive Royston but did anything else stand out for you uh, from today's Parliament sitting um, in her update mrs Teo uh, gave a figure she said that uh, you know under the current rules, about 20 dormitory operators you know have been taken to task each year for breaching you know, rules uh, with regard to uh, the housing of foreign workers. Uh, and, and that's quite a significant number because uh, in total there are 35 uh, dormitory operators, so that's more than half. Uh, so, so that kind of stood out for me. And, uh, and the other thing was uh, Minister Wong's response to uh, the NMPs, uh, Walter, Tessera and Antia Ong, which I think we flagged earlier about you know, their calls for a, a commission of inquiry. There's something that has also been floated online in some quarters and, and his response is basically that you know, we are still in the heat of the battle and you know, when things are concluded, you know, as, as with previous episodes, you know, the government will do a thorough review and you know, there will be time to look at you know, what went wrong, what, uh, you know, what areas need to be improved. Although he didn't commit to holding a, a you know, commission of inquiry or committee of inquiry, so, you know, what, what form the review will take and, and uh, when that will happen, I mean, those uh, the main open questions. Right. Well, thanks very much, Royston. We've been speaking to Royston Sim, who's Deputy Political Editor at The Straits Times. And for all Parliament updates, you can visit straitstimes.com.